Welcome to Thrones and Scones. It's your weekday morning podcast where we dilly dally and discuss Game of Thrones over a rather burnt breakfast. Today we're tackling season eight, episode five, The Bells. And I, I didn't ask. I was going to ask the... you for a second. Did I tell you I burnt my scones? Because I mean, they're chocolate scones, so they could look a little burnt. <laughs> You did not tell me. I just, uh, you know, I was going off the theme of uh, uh, the theme of everything. Yeah, exactly. The theme of but, the next conversation. Yeah. But what scone do you have today, Jeremy? I have a dark chocolate scone. Dark chocolate. Which I'm, I'm gonna take a picture of this uh, later this morning because um, we're doing this in the morning, like we do every podcast. Right. Um, right. So. After this conversation with someone who makes s'mores in the microwave, I'm going to take one of my scones and I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to put a marshmallow in the middle of it and I'm going to heat it up. Don't do that. Doesn't that sound amazing? No, stop right now. Oh, God, I cannot wait. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Do you like s'mores? Uh, S'mores are great. Yeah, s'mores are fine. S'mores are probably the only way to eat marshmallows, I think, as an adult. I don't really care for marshmallows at all. What about Peeps? You don't like you don't like the yellow. Actually, you know what? I'm a little bit on board with Peeps, but I liked them more as a kid. Mm-hmm. I never, I never developed a taste for the marshmallow fluff stuff. Were you guys into oh, this? Oh, like in the, in the jar, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. either. Didn't I like it. to call it jarshmallow. <laughs> you know, Did I tell you jar. about the my uh, one of my professors like who grew up and he loved eating. Um, what was that? Wonder Bread, Marshmallow Fluff, M and M's, and another oh. piece of Wonder Bread. Like, no. <laughs> like, no. like, what the fuck is that? Oh, those are. Uh, <laughs> some people are like parents these days, giving their kids too much free reign. Kids walking around doing weeds. No, no, no. Weeds. Kids doing that is too much free reign. Jesus, they need to yeah. be assaulted. We call that a diabetic sandwich. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, um, it's diabetes in the in between loaves of bread. <laughs> Actually, can I just say, just because I know we're gonna once we once we start talking Game of Thrones, we ain't gonna stop talking Game of Thrones yeah. for the next couple hours. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry this is a day late. We've had some recording conflicts, but we're here for you. We're ready to do things. Um, things. But in in talking about kids with you know diabetes. too much freedom doing all sorts of weird things, I watched the other day. Mid nineties, you guys familiar with mid nineties? No, no. It's a movie it came out last year. Jonah Hill made the movie. He is not in the movie, but it's about like a kid uh, from the nineties, like a young teenager getting in with the skateboarding group and stuff. It's like a period piece. Like every, the, the whole thing feels like it was filmed in the nineties. Like it's 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 very representative, kind of a snapshot out of time and stuff it's cool it's fine i've been wanting to see it for a while it's on amazon prime and so i watched it the other day and do you remember the scene in game of thrones when a very legally aged character and actress aria had consensual sex with another adult and we found it uncomfortable super yes. yeah yep I Oof, let me go ahead and throw you a curveball if you really want to double down on that feeling watch mid 90s because there is a scene where this kid who I believe the kid in the, like the character is 13. Ooh. The actor, when they filmed it, I think was 12. Oh. And there is like a sex scene. That's uncomfortable. Not a sex sex scene. Like they don't have sex. Um, but she, like they take each other's outer clothes off and he like pulls her shirt off and, and it's really weird. <laughs> The after, like the actual, the scene in the place of the show was, was good and fine, or in the movie was good and fine. And the, afterwards, when he's like walking out all embarrassed and like, <laughs> they're like, what, what happened? And he's, you know, he's like, she let me put two of my fingers in her vagina. Like, <laughs> like it gets really funny, but the, the actual moment itself was one of the most awkward things I've ever watched. And I was just... Watching it alone, and I don't know if that helped or made it better or worse. Like, I think your description was spot on. <laughs> Super awkward across the board. Yes, yeah, so even my cat left the room. He's like, I can't, uh, I can't do this. I can't hear. Se- I can't hear Tony say yeah. she let me put two fingers in the vagina. Yeah, yeah. 
and they're like, and they're like, oh, what else? What else? And she, he's like, she was like touching on my dick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> super weird. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, 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 we're here to talk Game of Thrones. Season 8, Episode 5, The Bells. I will be straight up. I am developing some sort of throat thing. And I have very powerful opinions about this episode. Or more aptly, very powerful opinions about people's very powerful opinions about this episode. So I'm, I'm going to try and not take the reins so much. Um, especially because I, I just ranted incessantly the last couple ones here. But I do want to go ahead and give you a little plot action because I feel like you guys deserve it. You've worked hard this week. Can I regale you with a brief, maybe the briefest yet, recap? It is one single sentence. Please. Please do. I'm trying to think of, like, if I'm interested in hearing it in a, uh, how about John Wayne? John Wayne. <clears throat> uh, a man, a pilgrim. Is that John Wayne? <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> Abe Lincoln, but I'm cool Am with it. <laughs> sure thing, Jeremy. Varys betrays his queen, and Daenerys brings her forces to King's Landing. <laughs> I'm very I, confident in saying that I've never seen a movie with John Wayne in it. No, I only know Family Guy's version of John exactly. Wayne. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm okay with it. Um, can I read you my recap? Yeah, please. So these are all of the notes that I took for season eight, episode five. All, every single note that I took. Go. Varys betrays Danny. Tyrion rats him out. John turns down Danny again. Quote: Let it be fear. Tyrion frees Jamie. Parentheses. Davos helps. Shit goes down. <laughs> so, um, first and foremost, again, especially because we got that extra day, I'm sure that there are just about two or three people squabbling to hear it. And I'm very curious because we have not talked at all um, ahead of this recording. Guys, just first thoughts. Well, just to jump in there real quick, I'm surprised your notes, the end of your notes, didn't say, Tony was right, bitches. <laughs> Tony was right, bitches. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the most consistent theme of this season. Of course, Tony was right, bitches. Um, no, th that is something that I will touch on. But yeah, I, I did call this. And I want to say that I called this, not to be like, oh, look what I did, I made a, I made a thing. But I want to say that I think the whole thing where people are like, this was too fast, is not justified. Because I've been saying it since like season two. And I'm not, again, not just because I wanted to stick to something and predict it. Because I think that they have been setting it up. Now, did they, did they kind of go off the deep end in a drastic way? Yes. But when you're talking about someone going crazy, I don't know how you want to do that subtly. Anyway, sorry. No, I 100% agree. I think I think one of the common themes of this show that we talk about uh, on this podcast all the time is how they do these like real quick changes all the time with these characters. Hey, you know, they make us like a character and then flip them and, and do all this stuff. I think a good example would be Braun, right? Now, that was a random, out-of-nowhere change this season to yeah. me. However, Daenerys, on the other hand, I agree. I think this is an example of where they absolutely did not do that. I think that this one was seeded so early, and now watching back, you would you would see it unfold as it goes. So I have no issues with that. Um, what did you guys uh, just uh, just ahead of the actual city attack itself? What did you guys think of uh, of kind of very gaunt Viserys looking Danny? Uh, this whole moment we got with with Varys. Um, I I I thought that it was fairly obvious. I know, of course, people pick up on on different things in the episode, so it could have just been where my head was at. But did you guys catch the poison thing? Because a lot of people on the internet didn't, and they, they had to kind of like be told it, and then they're like, oh, now it makes more sense. That Varys, were, that Varys was trying to have the kid poison Danny. Yes. At first, I didn't understand that it was poison, but it makes sense. 
So I think that that, uh, if you had any issues or it, as a lot of people online seemingly have had issues with Varys' death, it seems like they don't really, didn't really get that. It felt like it was a pretty obvious moment, but again, it could just be uh, where my head was at at the time. I just didn't feel like it was in his character. To poison Danny like yeah, that? Yeah, I felt like... Again? <laughs> well, I feel like for someone who has survived so many changes, so many regimes, like, where he was at and the things he was doing, and in not a very subtle way for a lot of things, I think he knew that it was going to be the end if he did these things. Like, I think he knew he was going to get caught. Yeah. And so, like, I, I don't know. And so, I I don't disagree with the things you're saying with the speed for Danny. I think there's a couple things with her character that really bother me. But Hold on, I, let's stick to Varys just for the time being. Oh, no, but that's my point with, is, is with this is. So, with Varys, I feel like this this episode, that change did happen too quick for me. For all okay. the things he does... And the manipulation and the thoughtfulness in his actions, I didn't feel like this played his character as well as we've seen. And right, they they've essentially cut him out until recently, and then they gave us the last episode, and we we're like, oh fuck yes, like Varys is back, like he's he's at least engaged again, and it was I was excited to see what things were going to happen for him, and then it was just like pedal to the metal, I'm. <coughs> 44 or 30 minutes into the show and I'm, I'm dead. Um, which here's the thing. And Tony, you're going to read the books. Hopefully if we get them, um, of course. Right. And one of the things that's always in the back of my head is Martin's statement of, Hey, I gave them cliff notes and the, the minor characters, if you will. And even some of the major characters, they know the direction I want to go in the sense that, live or die in, in my really belief in that he says hey this person's gonna die how they get there i think the writers have gotten to do a lot of creative kind of thinking and maybe come up with with things that we're never going to experience in the book which i think is fine but because of that knowing that they have such a short time to remove characters or make connections that maybe we are not completely aware of um on how they got there I think we're seeing that in some of the flaws in the last couple of episodes. So for me, Varys was a miss. I mean, I, mm. I understand he had to die, and that's fine with me. Um, and I like the poison thing. I just think that it ramped up so quickly for him, as it will for some other characters that really bothered me. Uh, yeah, that's a good... Varys is not the hill that I would absolutely decide to die on here. I, I oh, can yeah. see those issues. Yeah. Um, I... I think that th those are fair complaints. To play devil's advocate, yeah. I'll say that Varys is a smart dude, and he probably thinks or knows that things, as they do, will pop off pretty quickly here. So if he's going to do something, he doesn't have much time to do it. Um, so a, a lot of the careful stuff that he was doing before, he might have just not had the ability or the, the pretense to be able to do here. And I also liked how it did set up the flip of the coin, or rather both sides of the coin, um, counterpoint to Littlefinger. Where in season one, we kind of get both these characters, and it both seems like they're really playing the same game. And as time goes on, you realize that Littlefinger is playing this for Littlefinger, and Varys is playing for, as he says, the realm. But I don't really think we've had a moment to cement that until his death, which is very counterpoint to Peter Baelish's, whereas when Littlefinger's dying, it's very... Anything he can do to get out of there, groveling, begging people, making demands, crying, like Littlefinger is to the bone and to the end selfish, and Varys is, when it comes down to it, pretty dang selfless. Mm. And he was happy to die for the decision that he made which I, I liked that a lot yeah yeah that was good yeah i don't hans, disagree with that hans what did you think about uh about varus he was he was gone quick <laughs> in the yeah episode. he was gone quick i actually kind of liked how they played it out i think um much to a lot of tony's points uh i enjoyed the scene you know where you see him kind of last ditch effort trying to do everything he can to prevent what he ultimately knows is is likely going to happen, which we'll get to. Um, 
but I thought the scene was really nice. It was, uh, you know, him at his desk and then he, he knows that it's over, right? He starts taking off all his rings and everything. And I just, uh, yeah, I thought it, I thought it was really good. I didn't, I didn't have any issues with it. Um, fast. Yeah. But I think I have also come to just expect that knowing there's two episodes left. They got, they got to make decisions. Yeah. Qu- they got to have things wrap up pretty quick here. True. I will say, uh, if you set a piece of paper on fire and then put it into a jar and close the jar, <laughs> that fire is going to go yeah, out. <laughs> it will no longer be on fire. <laughs> uh, and also, the I won't say issue, but the kind of little twinge of inconsistency I did have with the whole Varys thing is Tyrion, I don't not buy him selling Varys out to Danny. I, I get that. I think that that would happen given everything that happened. I think that Tyrion has really doubled down on her. Um, I, you got to imagine he's pretty certain she's going to kill him. He's making that decision anyway. He's he's fully invested in this at this point. Um, but then going and freeing Jamie is a little counterintuitive to that whole mindset a little bit, don't you think? Yeah, uh, I. That was my one. I so I like kind of like we're saying. I had no issues with any of the Tyrion stuff, or not Tyrion, Varys stuff. I thought all of that played out well. Or like I thought all of that was good. Tyrion to me was a little bit erratic in this episode. Like I didn't necessarily understand his motives, and I would even argue too. I didn't necessarily buy him selling Varys out. Okay. You know, I, I, cause he already knew they already, you know, argued. And to me, it almost, from a standpoint of like, what is Tyrion getting out of sell? Like, I don't know. I, I, uh, I was a little confused at, at all of that as well, just because he seemed to kind of flip flop even within the episode. Um, and I don't know if he sold Varys out and then kind of saw what she did to him and then, after talking to her more, she's still being pretty crazy. And then he instantly regretted it, but he didn't really show that at that time. So I don't know. It seemed, seemed a little strange for me. I would say Tyrion (coughs) was kind of the weaker point of this episode than anything. Maybe there was a moment of self-preservation there. Cause he does see Varys telling, uh, John talking to John and, he he probably knows because as we see Daenerys puts it together pretty quickly that this came from Tyrion so had it played out gone badly Tyrion probably would have caught just as much of the blame yeah it may be not that i've not that i think they've set him up to be selfish like that especially at the expense of Varys so i think there was a more conscious decision behind it i think they've set him up though with the decision to release Jamie that yeah it's the next episode, there it's going to be very clear that he, if Danny is alive, if Danny lives, Tyrion dies. It's that simple for me. Next episode, and whether that's going to be a catalyst for her death, I'm not sure because I'm. And there's so many th- directions which we could go in conversation with, with why that intervention will or shall not happen, depending on what you believe in the goal of the game of thrones is to be at this point. Um, but I thought that that is the decision, which we can look back on Tyrion and go when he made that decision, when he chose family over his queen, Hmm. that was the mistake that we can relate to that will lead to his death. Right. He's, he's been very, very good. I mean, he's made mistakes, but he's owned them in a way he can't own this mistake. Right. I mean, he can't because there's no reason for it. Right. I mean, Jamie going there wasn't to help anyone but himself, really. True. And she already told Tyrion, she said, if you you're if you have another mistake, it'll be your last one. I mean, so and he knew that going to that decision. So I, I don't think there's much argument for leniency in that situation. Yeah, that's a good point. That scene. um, at Varys' execution with the uh, Drogon popping out of the shadow. Cool. It was cool. It was cool. Yeah, it was sweet. Very cool. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, so then Tyrion goes down and lists Davos' help to free Jaime, which is apparently a task that is achieved quite easily and no one notices. Oh, yeah. How, uh, did he, how did he get out of that <laughs> camp or whatever? 
<laughs> what the hell? Well, why did they stop him in the first place? You know, everyone else is leaving. Like, the Hound and Arya go. Like, it's no big deal. So I don't know. Like, Well, oh, the we... Hound and Arya are stopped. Right, but then they say, I'm going to do this. You don't think Jamie could have said, I'm going to go kill my sister? And they would have been like, oh, okay. I don't think they'd believe that for a second. Or I mean, he could have said anything. I'm gonna go. I'm going to. I don't. I don't know. I he just could have tried. Like, yeah, he could have tried. Yeah, I feel like. But is so? Isn't the Hound and Arya stopped by Lannister soldiers? Though uh, no, no, that would make sense because Who why are they would the stopped Lannister by? Soldier? They're stopped by. Uh, I think Northmen, but Northmen. They're stopped by somebody loyal to Daenerys. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because they say, "Hey, we're gonna go kill the queen, so nobody has to die tomorrow." And someone's like, I got to talk to my superior, which they wouldn't do if they were Lannisters. Yeah, yeah. no, that makes sense. For some reason, I thought they were stopped by, um, not Lannisters, but I thought they were stopped by people of, well, I guess it would be Lannisters, right? Like Cersei's yeah, yeah. army. Because I thought, I thought the whole point was like how ridiculous it would be. And then they're like, oh shit, like maybe that, that is better. <laughs> but I guess that makes more sense. And maybe it was. I don't feel like it was, but I guess it's not impossible. Ah, uh, no, I don't buy it. I. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's what happened. Could have been. Well, I'll just get it out the way now. There were no good, bad, and juggly moments. None. Weak uh, season. None. We did see some titties that we've not seen yet on the show, um, but they were man titties, and uh, hmm. that doesn't count to HBO. Let's get into the attack on king's landing okay wait before we do that fellas sorry i just have because one this i think this scene to me um because we were talking about with with danny and the change and whether it was it was good or whatever if you ask me for danny from the standpoint of the actress and the character change her interaction with john and that room where she's talking about there's no love for her here there's only this fear and his statement of like i love you you know you're my queen i i love this scene in in so many different ways and yet it has such a a trope to it if you will making that whole boyfriend girlfriend moment which is kind of just uncomfortable when he pulls away but her statement of so it'll be fear or let it be fear or whatever. And like the look on her fucking the coolest part of the show. Very cool. Very cool. Um, Just such a powerful moment. Like if you don't get where Danny is going to do now and you can say she's crazy. I can say she just is like, fuck everything then. Like just like the very Cersei moment where you're like, oh, oh shit. Like this woman is out for blood now. She she's tried. She's tried to be nice. She's tried to listen to everyone else. She she's tried to put a good fourth effort, but it is just not her thing. So she's like, you know what? I'm the queen. Fuck everything else. I'll show you how I'm going to rule. Yeah, it's the so obviously in case you don't watch the show and you only like us, Danny turns in this episode uh, she is going into take King's Landing. She has a masterful entrance, blows the gates open. Uh, and then the bells start ringing. And because they said it 13 times probably before this, we know what that means. The city surrenders. They took their time doing it, some stressful-ass scenes uh, of tension there. But they have an hour and a half. Let's play with it. And then she gets this absolute look of really good emotion on her face. Uh, fear and anger and I think a bit of paranoia going in there and she takes off anyway and she just starts laying fucking waste to the city and there are people out there that have issues with Danny turning villain and to those people I will say you're not going to enjoy any explanation that we will have I'm sorry that you didn't like the decision but for the people who don't care for the way it was done um, Jeremy is making fantastic points There was so much lead up to this, not only in seasons past, in that conversation with John, in the previous conversation that she had with John, and I'm going to go ahead and say in every uh, aggressive thing that she's ever done. People are talking about like, oh, she used to care about the slaves and stuff. She used to do this, that, and the other thing. I was like, she did that because it's what the situation kind of demanded. And she did that because slaves started revolting for her and helping 
and it played off of that. You know, well, she she didn't have to use fear because she was able to utilize other things. But she, she freed absolutely, them so they could be with her, though, right? I mean, like that's the thing. Yeah, like, and and it it furthered her goals. It furthered her it, goals. It's like it she created her. an army for her. And before any of that, just for being turned away at the gates, she threatened to burn down Karth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, like this is this is <laughs> this is nothing out of left field. And I understand that it happened very quickly. Um, and I will say, I don't think it made sense for her to start zigzagging through the city instead of beelining for the castle, like it looked like she was going to do. Um, I think that my my initial thought was. Have her burn the castle. Have the wildfire catch. The city can still blow up, basically, and she has to deal with that on her conscience. Mm -hmm. But I think for the turn, it's important to have her make that decision to really double down. I just thought from the tone of things that it could have been done a little differently. But this is her moment where, uh, again, she's lost two dragons at this point. Her lover is her family, and she is super paranoid that even if he doesn't betray her, somebody is going to use him to betray her. She just had to execute one of her um, high-ranking officials for trying to do just that. Her other official is on thin ice and has betrayed her again. Maybe she even knows that. Because, again, how could somebody not know that at this point about Jamie escaping? Mm-hmm. Um, Danny's been through a lot of shit. This is her punch the wall moment, you know? She's angry, she's pissed, she's just letting out some aggression. She just, you know, we punch walls. She's on top of a dragon on top of a city. Her, you know, the, the destructive power she has is a little bit more. And you go ahead and add in that, that madness that's been alluded to so many times. I don't think that this was an untelegraphed move at all. No, I think, uh, I agree. I, I like your... Uh idea of you know maybe she did have this burst of rage and and did something and then the, not knowing obviously about the wildfire I, I i i think i would have liked that better but i don't dislike what happened and i didn't ever not see it coming uh maybe because tony you've been uh <laughs> prefacing this this whole time you've been prepping me for this i don't know sure sure but um no i i i think it was completely reasonable and i think this episode more than any other is, you know, now I think I think Masande carried a lot more weight than even the than is even necessarily very obvious or, or very apparent because I would say now even thinking of who Daenerys has around her now she's probably I mean she's now completely alone as far as people she truly trusts and people she's been with this whole time. Where Masande was kind of that final person that she's had throughout all these seasons that have really kept her balanced. And now, you know, Tyrion, Varys, these are kind of newcomers. She She's always been a little skeptical. Um, and they've, you know, failed her a couple of these times. They weren't there from the beginning. And I think that, you know, that on top of everything else and knowing that there's someone who could be used to betray her that everyone already loves is probably pretty difficult to handle internally so i think it was uh actually pretty well written um as far as where her arc goes yeah and a good point there i totally neglected to even think about jorah to even think about uh, miss sande like yeah those are huge those are huge things and also uh something that i just thought of as far as you know, taking cities go and stuff, you know, we've said she's gone about it a number of different ways. One thing she has done is been quite merciful in what she does with the cities. You know, she allots a lot of things. When she takes and sacks Astapor, she basically gives it over to the slaves. That city gets retaken. Same thing happens to Yunkai. And then in Marine, at the end of everything, people just turn on her. So uh, don't, you know, don't think that like, oh, da- Daenerys is just taking aim at a bunch of innocent people. No, in her mind, she's given them every opportunity. She even said this in the last episode where she's like, let's, you know, we'll give them one more opportunity to see, you know, that Cersei's, Cersei's going to be the one dooming them to their fate. Um, and, you know, in, in her mind, I think these are people that are against her and that she'll never be able to trust. Yeah. And I think we've we've mentioned it multiple times at this point, but you know, 
how many things has Daenerys ever really accomplished without violence? I would say very little. So mm. I don't think that that's, you know, ever... It's always been the writing and the way the episodes have panned out. It's always, she's always been kind of the lesser evil, but I don't, I don't know if she was ever not evil, you know, in a, in a way. So in a way for sure. Yeah. I think people are just going to struggle with, they want a love story, right? Like they want a warm feeling from this show and they've been given, they've been given glimmers, but this show is like, continued to like constantly they want they want young T Swift. We're getting new T Swift. Yeah, we're getting. <laughs> but I mean, the show continues. Danny's just flying around. Show. Ooh, look what you made. <laughs> like love is love is one of those things that does not win, right? Like it just doesn't it doesn't pay off. And I the show is constantly pointing those things out in relationships that it just is going to lead when you make decisions with your heart. Not only are you fucked. But you're going to get a lot of your friends and family killed too. And so like when this whole like romance with John and Danny was happening and everyone was like naming their kids after them and calling their <laughs> newborns, you know, Khaleesi and all. I mean, like this, this situation that it created, like, I'm like, oh my God, like you, this show is going to burn you people badly. And it's just done that. And so people are uncomfortable with that. But I feel like, if anything, the show has taught us from the beginning, it's coming. Yeah. I do yeah. feel bad for all those John Harris's out there. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, poor John Harris. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, yeah, every, every John out there right now is regretting it. <laughs> They're like, oh, fuck you, mom. <laughs> but I, I agree. I no. didn't get the whole dragon zigzagging through the city. Even Even in anger, I just... You know, like, you had your target. Like, burn it to the fucking ground. Um, I just didn't get the whole... Even, even like, when the army is, like, going through and ransacking the city. Like, the Grey Worm. Like, when the, when the, um, the soldiers are putting down their weapons and they're surrendering. Like, you see, like, John is, like, super uncomfortable. Like, because he's seeing this, this change amongst the army he's fighting with and the queen, like he's watching this disaster happen of like, whoa, 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 this is, this is, this is wrong. We shouldn't actually be doing it this way. We came here to do this, but we didn't come here to slaughter those that are, you know, giving up and those that are surrendering. But, you know, Grey Worm, he cracked. And I think that's, we're seeing, I mean, they're showing multiple layers of her kind of inner circle of just going straight up, fucking nuts um and i think that's i'm really interested to see what they do with the next show because of that like we have we have some bat shitty characters right now the uh yes some some serious bad shit going on a friend of mine made a very cool point that i had not considered um the last shot we really get of danny is when she makes that decision she's in the rest of the episode but she is just kind of this ever-present danger to everyone we don't actually see her face after that um which i think is a really powerful you know telling turn like the, i i thought that it was a very cool way to kind of do it and also, what would you show her looking like? Just constantly like grunting or something? I don't know. Yeah, because I mean, I don't, I don't know if you could really show. Her. Yeah, it'd be difficult because uh, it's interesting how the, I don't. I'm very interested to see what the first shot of Daenerys is going to be, right? Because how does she feel after doing all of this? Because yes, she was instigated by anger, but then is she really just? She was up there a long time. <laughs> she was doing a lot of burning. She was. Are you telling me she didn't even second? You know, she didn't second guess herself while she's halfway through burning all these people. Well, at that point, like, <laughs> just yeah, you might as well. <laughs> and, and so the whole dragon's fire, you know, all that stuff with igniting the city, is that her fault? Wildfire. Sorry, wildfire. Sorry, is the wildfire her fault? It's not, in my opinion. Like, no, of I, course, I was, it's her fault. I no, it's I. I don't think it's her fault. I mean, she. In no way, shape, or form. I don't know if Tyr- did Tyrion sat there and tell her, "Hey, be careful in the city because there's all these archives of of wildfire that you could set off." I don't remember that conversation happening. I, I imagine know. the conversation has happened because Tyrion definitely knew about it. After the Sept blew, a lot of people had to know about it. Um, 
So it's it's got to be. Yeah, I don't know how much the wildfire. Even, yeah, we saw it, and I'm sure obviously it did some damage, but oh, I, think I don't know critical. if that changed the game at all. I mean, she was freaking lighting that whole city up anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I feel like the that the structure of that city, and this is going to be uh, the city had to burn anyway. It was a clusterfuck. You, <laughs> you had a city that was built on destruction. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could argue that it's it, she goes crazy and destroys it. But I also think, you know, it, it's her way of cleaning house. I'm sure that's what she's thinking, too. I don't know. Yeah. The one issue I, I really do have with this episode is these scorpions. <laughs> God, <laughs> um, fucking writers, and I, I swear to so God. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Danny, so when, when Rhaegal gets taken out, with masterful precision and stuff. Oh. And you're like, oh shit, that's crazy. But even then, they shoot at Danny, and as soon as she sees them, she's able to outmaneuver them. So I buy that she could do this whole thing without getting shot. My pr- and I even I even like how they went the first attack was like nearly straight down using the sun. So it was like you couldn't quite see the dragon coming in time and it was until it was too late. I like that. I thought it was awesome. After that like, she deals with the fleets, and they take a couple shots, and then she does that quick strafe at the keep and has that last-minute pull-up to dodge those, and then we never even see another one move toward her. Uh, so I, I buy that she could have done what she did. I think it was very lazy that the show didn't even make it look like that they were trying anymore. Like, <laughs> uh, Which, it was a flaw that didn't need to happen. That's the thing. Like, it seemed lazy. Yeah. It bummed me out. I was I I'm like I'm like fifty fifty on it. It was definitely I I loved the opening. It was so good though. Yeah, I agree oh, at the, yeah. on that. When Euron's like looking up Making in the that sky, straight, and they're blowing the blocking the sun, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh shit! And it's uh, and he's and at that point it's like all the our uh, all the scorpion things are like pointed the wrong direction or whatever. <laughs> they're like, oh, boom! I like that they emphasize that these are mass like. It made sense because these are massive things. They're not going to just be flipping around, you know. They're yeah. not going to be like the uh, the Star Wars seat in the Millennium Falcon. I would have died if someone was making pew pew sounds during that scene. Pew 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 pew. pew, pew. Um, I mean, a lot. Go ahead, Jeremy. No, I was just saying. So that, um, yeah. I mean, I, listening to this conversation actually makes me think that it was actually wasn't as bad as I thought. I just didn't like the fact that they make them seem like these dragon killers and like they just wreck a dragon. And yet then they have one dragon left and an obscene amount of these throughout the city and boats. And yet there's like, not, it seems like only one person's ever firing, you know, like why would you only have one person firing? You would think like, 30 of these things would just be launching them in the sky. Yeah. I think I think Hans makes a great point in that once the element of surprise is lost and you do have to do an awful lot of physical maneuvering to get these into position, to shoot at a yeah. moving target that's v- very fast and moving unpredictably, I think it would be hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just... It didn't even look difficult. Like... <laughs> Just boom, 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 boom. And how did she end up behind the army blowing up the wall? Like, you know. Well, she attacked from the seaside, so she came through the city. Oh, okay. Because I was like super confused when that happened. I thought that was awesome, by the way. Um, Yeah. But also super just like, oh, okay. Sweet. They just, the go. I I like that they introduced the Golden Company and then they you got enough that just tiny bit of their leader to just hate him. <laughs> <laughs> just hate his stupid face. Yeah. And then they were just gone in an instant. Yeah. Just it was decimated. a little, yeah, it was a little anticlimactic, but like the kind of anticlimactic that like, I like, like that was a great twist. Like just, Oh yeah, that was, they're useless. That was cool. Uh, I'm just saying, I don't think, ele- I don't think elephants would have mattered. <laughs> <laughs> But they would have made Cersei happy. You know, maybe she needed a little of that. I don't know. Um, one person who didn't make her happy because he couldn't, couldn't land a shot was Euron, who we all know did not blow up when that ship did. And he made it to, conveniently, the same little tiny 
cave beach that Jamie made it to. And uh, the two engaged in a duel. What would you guys think of this? My exact words were when when he's coming up on shore, I go, <laughs> as you alluded to, my exact words were, well, that's, that's convenient. <laughs> how, rid- <laughs> how ridiculous. But. Yeah, it was. So I will say, I thought Jamie was going to die right here on this beach. And I was not thrilled. <laughs> He didn't end up dying, even though I think he lost both kidneys. Uh, he, he did okay. Y- you're on. I guess we didn't technically see die, but he's definitely dead. He's, he's 100% it. dead. He went out like a madman, uh, just spouting ravings about, I'm the man who killed Jamie Lannister, like blah, 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 blah. Which is fine and funny and okay, fine. I think it suits what they've built up within the past few episodes. Um, and then he died a stupid death, like a bitch, because he's a bitch, and he deserved to die a stupid death. My biggest flaw with Euron is I really thought they were going for, like, a third-act villain. Like, he was going to be the next Joffrey, the next Ramsay. They were mm-hmm. really trying to mm-hmm. set him up as that, th- that next major villain. And I think that giving him a stupid death invalidated that idea. Um, and I love that. I, I thought it was great, and I thought it was uh, it was fitting. And I, sure, it would have been satisfying to watch somebody rip his head off, but I didn't need it. I liked this. Yeah, I didn't mind this. And yeah. making it Jamie that did it, I think, was a good touch. Yeah, again, convenient, but convenient. Oh, convenient. God, yeah, yeah. And I didn't think. I mean, God's the way he was cutting Jamie up. I was like. Bro, you you ain't living. You ain't alive through that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I mean, like it's. I mean, yeah, you're you're lefty, and I mean, I don't know. That that bothered me because I felt like you're gonna actually beat him, like beat him pretty handily. So, was that a pun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with his left handily. Yeah, it um, was. Uh, yeah, it was good though. But yeah, no, I, 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 I mean, we can all that. That was that was just writing. That was just getting rid of a character. Um, but but Jamie in the city, uh, you know, and when he when he finds Cersei, which we can talk about Cersei getting to that point. But uh, I, did you feel like they were trying to make us feel sorry for Cersei? I don't know if feel sorry is right, but. Or- like, humanize her yeah like pity her almost like when i was watching yeah. it i was like i'm like i hate this cunt why would i why so would did I you care? not then huh no, well did- i i felt sorry for how they were ending jamie's character that bothered explain? me because you didn't like it no i didn't because i this is the character which i build my my hill on his sure. arc was fantastic until he fucked Brienne, and then in the same episode, like, fucking flipped on her, and then comes back to his sister's di- you know, side to die with their unborn child. I, I just fucking hate that. I just, I'm sorry, I just annoyed the shit out of me. Um, can I make a defense for Jamie? Yeah, go sure. ahead. Here is my defense for Jamie's action, because I agree, this is, not, this is exactly the opposite of any ending I ever wanted. For Jamie, or predicted for that matter. Like, I think all of us had him killing Cersei, or at least playing a part in that. So this is backwards of what I would have expected. I loved it. And here's why. I think that what Jamie has gone through, and first of all, he has said before, I think that the line has been said, you know, how, how do you want to die, Kingslayer? In the arms of the woman I love, or something, blah, blah, blah. Okay. A little bit of foreshadowing. But Jamie has... Been a terrible person. Again, as I think the writers have said in one of these behind-the-scenes things, Jamie was the first villain of the show. Uh, you know, our, our episode one villain, pushing Bran out. Jamie has done a lot of good and a lot of bad, and some bad in weird, really odd places where it seemed like he was doing pretty good. Um, <clears throat> Jamie, by the end of his arc, by last episode, has kind of made amends for most of that. He's straight up been essentially forgiven by Bran. He has defended the the city and the people that he once fought so hard to to kill and, and wipe out. Um, he has, you know, really kind of abandoned the things that make him a bad person and has found a kind of reinvigorated purpose in a sense. He also, 
gets with Brienne. He finds a a woman who who loves him for who he is, not who she wants him to be. And I think at the end of everything, when Jamie has it all, he isn't happy. And I don't know if he went to die or if he went to be with Cersei. I kind of think he went to die uh, and or both. But either way, this is never the ending I wanted for Jamie. But I think despite of himself, in spite of himself, it's the ending that Jamie wanted for Jamie. And I, 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 if you would have told me this happened, I would have screamed at you and told you that it was stupid. But watching it, I, I had no, I really liked it actually. Oh yeah, I mean, it was well stated. I, I just, there are things for me in the moments of when it comes to characters that we feel we get a we get a knowledge for we watch some change happen when there are those things they want us to they make us believe in the sense of like you know he starts standing up for the good things in the kingdom he starts living for the living so when he says those things you know and then goes back and chooses i mean i mean i know that and maybe the whole Tyrion thing with like Go there. You have a shot. You guys can get out. You can have that fairy tale ending. Um, yeah. That'd be the only thing I can see that he's seeking because it doesn't make sense for him to go there to die unless he's because I mean, family was supposed to be the most important thing for him, right? Like he's like, I don't regret any of the things I did for my family because at the end of the day, what I was doing was for the bigger picture, and that's what really matters. Is you know are my children, my, my wife in his mind, right? His, his, yeah. his love of his life. Um, and then I thought with Brienne, he started to get that, you know, living that life, but doing those things in a way that still is wrong does not mean you're going to be happy or that you're doing the right thing. So to have that sort of awareness to then just go hardcore the other direction, I, I don't know. I just, I found it less appealing. I think it's similar to the Varys thing where he doesn't have much time to make a decision in that regard, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think he very much went not back to Cersei the Tyrant, but back to take Cersei away from that or to die with her. Because I think that he knew there was a, like a, a huge chance they weren't getting out. Even he said they'd have to, you know, roll pa- row, literally row a boat across the seat. Like, you know... There, there was a lot of element of him not making it out of that situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the first person you ever, have you ever been, been in a situation where everything seems to be going right and you're just not fucking happy? Like this, this, I don't think this made Jamie any less of a tragic character and a really good character. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a, it was a cool twist. I understand very much how people could not like it. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, and I think. Uh-huh. To that, in my opinion, the one thing I will give the writers for, um, I, I don't know your opinion on the Clegane Bowl, but this was so good for me. Flawless. Yeah, like this is like one of those things that I, I have to tell myself that Martin was like, this is the scene. This is how <laughs> I want it to go. I want this kind of epic doom and fire and angry bitter dirty grimy kind of fight and i mean i just loved it it was so good and i love the way it ends even like more it's because watching that battle you're just like nope yep all right the mountain is i mean he's dead but he's indestructible and and this is the game of thrones you're dead the hound's fucked and I love, I love when he's watching. You can see through the like through the wall a little bit, like a like the light, the fire behind it. And I'm like, oh fuck, he's gonna fucking ram him through that wall. Oh my fucking god, it was epic for me. Yeah, I, uh, I was a little. I mean, we know how the fight ended, right? They uh, they both went out, presumably. Um, but I'm I'm a little surprised. It's a little unbelievable because obviously. The mountain had the high ground. <laughs> no, I thought the, I said the, the literal words. The mountain had the high ground, 
to somebody as like Sandor's walking up and Cersei walks past him and it's just the two of them. I turned to my friend who I was watching it with. I was like, dude's got the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then two minutes later, when he gets his helmet knocked off Darth Vader style. <laughs> yeah. And the fire in the background. <laughs> it was so, <laughs> it was so Star Wars. Um, but it was so cool. Like the mountain looked t- terrifyingly creepy. The whole fight was awesome. It was brutal. It was crazy. Sander started getting his ass kicked and, you know, going through the whole thing. Boom, boom, boom. Stabbing him in the face. And we're like, oh, shit. Because I don't know if anyone knows. Like, can that, will that do it? Blah, blah, blah. And then he just starts pulling the dagger. I know. Oh, it was really good. Oh, and when he was doing the eye thing again, I was like, oh, my God, another death this way? That is badass. Did you guys happen to watch the, uh, Ending with the the creators talking about the show. Yes. Yeah. You did. So you you watch. Okay. So they talk about this scene partic- specifically, and they say, "Well, you know, we, we were trying to, de- you know, we were deciding how to how to play this out and all this." And then he goes, "We just we knew the hound had to die by fire." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "Wait <laughs> a minute." That fall killed him. <laughs> he did not die by fire. <laughs> Uh, there Jenna, was a good actually, point. I think Jenna, that was the yeah. first thing Jenna said. She goes, "No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he fell down." Jeremy, that was I think a good point with the the light through the window, like or through the wall rather, the, the yeah. fire burning and stuff. He, I think he still had to make that conscious decision yeah. to do it. Um, it wasn't as like I thought we were going to watch him burn to death. I wasn't mad at it, but no, no he did not die by fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, and oh. I thought like the uh the show gave I think a lot of fans that warm and fuzzy moment with Arya and him. And I think like I think he loves her and like the whole father daughter like protecting kind of thing and he's like, you know, I'm I'm dead. Like this is it. I I think he has no doubt that he's going to die in the show in this in this moment. Um and and the fact that he's able to convince her to to walk away from revenge to just just one time give him those things and and I don't know I don't remember if he if she ever calls him anything other than the hound or you know but when she calls him by his first name it's like it's very powerful and I thought that was I think Arya is uh in the music with Arya and even at the end that scenery that is some of the greatest parts of this episode. I thought we were losing Arya in this episode. Me too. Um, I think we all did. They went for the backwards thing that I thought was going to happen um, when they really start painting her with this mom and her daughter and kind of following them around and then leading them around and then going through all this stuff. I thought it was going to be because they made that episode really that whole thing with the hounds to kind of rehumanize her mm-hmm. and um and stuff like that and i thought that it was going to be her giving up her life for these these people and they went the other way with it but i was scared for a second <laughs> yeah um, what'd you think about the horse thing fucking bullshit so the, there's the brand theory yeah I the horse is brand. Yeah. <laughs> I I I just I just think that it was a, a silly thing written in. I don't think the horse is going to have an explanation. I just think it was for the death imagery, which I thought was cool. Sure. Yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was totally <laughs> fine. I thought it was good. I, I do like the memes though. The memes. The are memes funny. are great. I will say, I was so confused. I was racking my brain. I'm sitting there. We're watching the episode, and I'm like, Oh no no no! It's a callback. It's a callback because they had a very similar moment, and I'm trying to remember. And all I can picture in my head is like this real foggy thing like this crazy scene happening and then a horse just kind of like comes out of nowhere <laughs> it was fucking batman versus superman <laughs> <laughs> I, the greatest so I, movie ever <laughs> i don't think they were making a callback to batman versus <laughs> superman uh, <laughs> it was just uh it was just game of thrones but i liked it i thought it was good yeah I, uh yeah the, the one meme i particularly liked was uh uh, it just the meme just says, "Arya, your Uber has arrived." <laughs> it's, it's like Bran doing the warging thing and the horse being there. <laughs> oh, it's real. This is the least memed episode thus far, so that's a good one to have. We got the only yeah. The my second favorite meme that I saw from the episode was uh, uh, unfortunately hitting on a source a little bit of a sensitive subject for me, being a big Jamie fan, mm. um, but also. 
being a big Tormund fan. It shows like, it just shows, there there was a bunch of them, but basically it just showed like Jamie, uh, Jamie's death, you know, happening. And then like, or like Jamie leaving Brienne, Jamie's death, and then just the biggest smile on Tormund's face. He's like, he's the tall one here. I will just say, because I've seen it floating around a lot, there's all this thing of like another editing error or whatever, where Jamie's hugging Cersei and he has two regular hands. Um, the picture that everyone is talking about is a promotional pre-edited picture. So that didn't air. You are just seeing a picture that leaked. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, the Torment stuff. King Killer's dead, so Torment can make the moves now. Who knows? Uh, uh, so, Jamie, Hans, what were your thoughts on Jamie? Did we get that? Uh, I'm conflicted. I don't. I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. Yeah, I, I think it fits the character. I think it fits Game of Thrones style. Like I said, I, I was not expecting it, which I kind of liked. So, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm making my peace with it. I'm kind of just along for the ride at this point. Yeah, and it's not. Yeah, it's so the <laughs> my the most annoying thing I've seen so far is like the it's throwing away seasons of character development. No, it isn't. It's it wasn't doing that when Ned died. It wasn't doing that when Rob died, or any of the like. These are massive, crazy decisions that are made in the show. It's upsetting now because it's ending. Like, yeah, <laughs> it, we're yeah. we're upset that it's going to end. Yeah. Rightfully so. Like, um, yeah. But I think I know. I I even I don't think it changes anything. I think he's always been a very complex character, and I think that's why I like him. I think that's why a lot of people like him. But yeah, and I kind of like that it went out. In a, in a little bit of a bittersweet way so that it, it doesn't wash things away. Like, I think going back and watching the show, even before this new season, the things that Theon does doesn't seem as bad to me. The things mm-hmm. that Jaime does still seem pretty bad. Um, and I like that that's not going to be washed away even knowing how the show ends. He is a very, yeah, complex character. It's good. What do you think about the moment for what it means to Cersei? Or for Cersei's character, or whatever. It doesn't change anything for me for Cersei. She you you didn't like it. Well, no, I, I mean, no, I mean, I'm just saying. So you asked what, like what it meant for her character. I mean, like she is responsible for this death and destruction. She oh, is right, right. Like everyone's yeah. gonna blame Danny for going crazy. But at the end of the day, Danny only gets to go crazy because Cersei continues to just be like well fuck it if i can't have this then no one gets to have this and this entire city is going to burn she puts a human shield in front of her and then she watches them all burn so yeah I, yeah so for me it's I, like okay great so she gets to die with her brother it's almost too good for me i don't know i uh as much as i didn't want to i felt for her. yeah it's my favorite um I think the last moment of this that we really get, like the real, real moment, uh, there's a couple. When when Marcella's boat is coming back and she is just kind of sitting on the beach crying. Yeah. When she gets Ilaria and Tyene and she's talking to them and she's just like, you know, why did you you're just very real? These are my favorite Cersei moments when she's just open and uh, emotional like this. So her breaking down in in a way at this point was awesome. I really loved it. It didn't make me think of her as less of a villain, but she was like a person who was a bad person and I felt for her. Right. And her death, I loved. Oh yeah, no, um, I loved her death. And not just the fact that she is dead because I had no doubts about that. Uh just I've seen a lot of people saying like she deserved a you know, a big a big death, you know, you wanted to see her burn or you wanted to see her this that and the other thing. So she's kind of spent her life um, differentiating, her, differentiating herself from other people at the expense of a lot of other people. And for her to just go out like everyone else, I thought was like a really cool kind of twist of fate. But I think yeah. she goes out in a way that the show is, they're, they're escaping, right? Like they, you for moments think, oh my God, like they're going to get away. Like, yeah, from from the screen perspective, for a, for a second, and I think that the moment, as one of you guys said, was kind of more for Jamie. Um, but like 
as far as what everyone else is concerned, if they find her, it's just, oh, she just, yeah, she just, she just burned or, you know, was crushed like everyone else in the city. Yeah, I don't know. I th- I felt like that was a, a very fitting ending to her. Um, it's like, uh, it, it felt right for me that she would have this emotional, like, I don't want to die. Like, I mean, again, I mean, they, they, they make it realize, like, I don't care how, how empower you feel. The reality is when death comes, death comes. Right. And most people still grovel kind of at its feet. And I feel like all that just shows is that even though it's a game, a lot of people are dying and it feels very real at the end. Yeah. It was a, yeah. Um, and she was the queen, right? She was the queen. And, and and what did that mean? That meant nothing at the end. Yep. Absolutely. Because she, she had kinda, nothing. She had, I, she had a baby that was never going to be born. She had a lover that was never going to spend another night with her. It was, it was very kind of like dark. It was, yeah, it was very final. Yeah. But that's a good yeah. word. I like that better. I, I did kind of like the, uh, of Cersei's scenes. I did like that right before the uh, Clegane ball. She just kind of looks at, and it's almost it's almost like she's just like ah, children. Like she just walks away. She's just like so annoyed with them. It's very good. I love that too. Yeah, and Kyvern just getting fucking oh. holy shit. Wasn't that the greatest? That was awesome. That was that was so enjoyable. Oh, the oh yeah. <laughs> Hans and Jenna are doing the Lord's work, by the way. They've gone through and listened to our predictions episode again and made marks of who voted for all who to die. So in our recap and stuff, we'll actually tally that up. But do you guys want to check in real quickly with uh, just our our consensus on death and see how we're doing? Yeah. Uh, And then we're still missing a character, but as far as death, I think we've hit them all. So this is Did we talk about, did we even have Kyburn on there? Oh. Uh, he's the last one, so it looks oh, like okay. we added him right at the end. And we five to nothing voted for him to die. So we nailed that. Uh, let's see. Drogon survived, by the way. So I wouldn't far, have called yeah. that. Survived so this far, episode. So far. So far. Uh, Varys. What do you think we voted for Varys? Live. We voted three to two. Close one. For Varys to die. Mm. Oh, really? So we were correct. Um, Euron. Oh, dead. That suck is dead. It must be Rob that voted for him to live, right? Oh, it <laughs> was. I remember that <laughs> exact moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Mountain. Oh, dead. dead. Unanimously, we nailed that one. Cersei. Somebody had Cersei alive. I don't know who. Mm, I can't. To be honest, I was just looking at it. I can't remember. I think Somebody it was did. Rob again, actually. Could be, could be. Um, none of us had Jamie dying. Really? We were all we were all real confident in that. That was a miss. <laughs> Solid miss. Uh, and uh, the Hound is our last one here. The Hound. We had a one, life, I think, right? One person had him living, so you may have. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I, I pictured him killing. The mount. I think we all we all saw that coming. I just think, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if I remember correctly, it kind of came down to him and Arya against the mountain, and one of them was going to kill. One of them was going to get killed, and the other one was going to take revenge. Yeah. And I think we'll, somebody, everyone, kind of was like, "Oh, it'll be the Hound that dies, and Arya that gets revenge." And somebody had that flipped. Yeah, Olivia uh, was always telling me how her theory was that. Arya was gonna like mercy kill the hound at the end mm. like was gonna be there to put him down after it all went bad where she couldn't do it last time was gonna do it this time and I was like that would have made sense but again I don't think it's necessary because I I always thought that it was gonna be like this massive death <laughs> sure yeah. for the hound in the, in the mountain and I always pictured fire and I think that was a cool I mean how they did it was just so good it looked so good. It, it did. Felt it just looked so good. It felt right. Yeah. It was one of the best moments of the season so far. Um, for sure. So at the end of this and everything, I kind of like had this just sensation from the beginning. Like it's from season one where we had this conversation of like, 
the Starks and how they built this family. And we were like, oh, this is about the Starks. And then everyone dies in the Starks. And you're like, oh, fuck, this isn't about the Starks. I feel like it's coming back to the Starks. It's like, you know, we, we get an idea and it, and it's a very long and winded road, but we're, yeah. but we're coming back to the family that they're telling the history of in a way. And that is the Starks. And I feel like this next episode is going to solidify that for us. We've watched all these other great families that have done maybe horrible things in both their family history or to other houses. And a, a very loyal family has always been the Stark family, right? They've always kind of been more about the honor and those things from like Ned's standpoint and all those things. And I feel like that's kind of the direction they're going at the end of this show. I'm not opposed to it. Uh, if that's, I'm, I Starks are some of my favorite characters. I would love to see that. It would feel, uh, it would feel very satisfying. I think in a lot of ways, if that is what they're going for, it doesn't bode well for John. <laughs> yeah. And well, I mean, so that's the thing is like, while John and so that's the thing, like Theon, right? He wasn't a Stark, but he was a Stark in that regards, right? Like Yeah, true. And, and same thing with John. John we find out isn't a Stark, but that doesn't mean he doesn't hold all the values and those things that he was raised in that manner. And so I feel like that actually does bold well for him because that means he gets to kind of still maintain those things that are very important to the way he was brought up and all the flaws of that. Right. I mean, like we've seen the flaws of that belief and the, and then the, the decisions that have led to a lot of maybe senseless death, but they've done it, what they believe following an honor system. And not, and John continues to do that. Yeah. Now Theon had to die to learn the lesson. So was that Theon dying to learn the lesson so that John didn't have to, or was that foreshadowing for them to play off the same kind of thing? I don't know because I feel like you know Bran's statement at the end of like you're a good person was him saying like look, you've always been part of our family. We we are thankful to have you. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and I feel like that was something that you know just kind of brought him his character back in that inner circle. You know. Uh, Sansa has developed into the head of the house, right? Very much like her mother, um, but less, I would say, emotional compared, right? It's just very kind of to the point. Um, and Arya, Arya has become the brother who just gets shit done, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, because that's not John. I mean, J- John is almost more of a wishy-washy decision maker compared to anyone else in this show. Yeah. He makes well, decisions, yeah. but he never seems to understand why he's making them. <laughs> he's got a big decision to make as well. We haven't even talked about oh, John God, in this episode. Uh, he had to kill one of his own men yeah. to kind of set right the wrong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it was totally... The dude was about to... Uh, about to about to rape a guy, and he he didn't just kill him. He was like, "Hey," huh. and then he killed him. Yeah, the uh, whole the whole sacking of the of the of King's Landing was really I don't know. It just seemed odd. I mean, but it's crazy, and I think maybe yeah, it just I'm, fits the model. I want to get your thoughts on on this because I was kind of thinking, and this is maybe getting a bit ahead of ourselves here, but this is kind of right what i want to talk about is is you know we see we see gray worm t- pretty much turn right with danny like he's we've he's shown us that he's pretty much full-fledged like he was in it for revenge against masande he's in it with danny it seems to whatever to any fault at this point yeah and now we see the northmen granted not all but i'm a good chunk of the northmen just kind of get you know just lose it in this battle and go a little crazy and just get savage and all this stuff uh, other than John. But now I'm wondering, like, and we obviously the Dothraki are going to most likely be with Daenerys, I would only imagine. The six so, like, of them? Yeah, the six of them that I still don't know how even those six are alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I just, I'm really like, fine, like who, who 
say they go against, say like someone goes against Danny now, which I, I think is the impetus here. Who, why would the North men who have basically just decided to side with this nearest person on the back of John and now they win and they like, what do they have to gain by then? Like if John says, Oh no, now we have to take this. (laughs) Like, I just, I don't know who's left to fight against Daenerys. And even if there are, they would have to not only fight what is apparently a never ending Dothraki horde <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, the Unsullied and a fucking dragon. So I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, the dragon's yeah. a huge dragon's question mark now. for the next episode because yeah. who kill, who kills Drogon? And why? Why does yeah, John kill Drogon? Like, that doesn't even necessarily make sense. From a character arc standpoint, if Arya... Arya would, I would argue, other than Bran, maybe, Arya is, like, the biggest asset on that side of things. You know, John, Hell Arya, yeah. Bran, probably. But Arya's the, you know, if, if anything, they've made her to be out this, you know, this uh, just ridiculous killer, this this trained assassin type thing and now her arc has pretty much taken her to this place where she shouldn't be that anymore right she should be a bit more reserved she should be a bit more humanized if she just goes and just revenge kills somebody that kind of invalidates that entire moment with the hound i think i think she more especially with the end there trying to do the good for those people watching them get burned. I think sh- that it's more of she has purpose to live rather than purpose to just die. Sure. Now, you know, uh, I think it w- absolutely humanized her a bit, but I think that, I mean, there was fire in her eyes at the end there. I think she was, yeah. she's, she's got some sort of uh, score to settle. Yeah. I got to think. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know how much of a war it will be. The dragons. Yeah. A, a X factor I hadn't prepared for at this point. Yeah, I guess um, my point is even if it is some sort of assassination or some sort of just getting to Danny, like I what there's no way even if they kill Danny or however this plays out, there's no way the unsullied and Dothraki Dothraki may be less so, but there's no way the unsullied and the dragon are just gonna be cool with that. Nah. And there's still way more of them than I would imagine any uh, you know, Northern Army or whatever they would have. I yeah, I don't know. And again, I think the dragon alone is enough to clearly take out anyone. Yeah. In the instance of, you know, our, our kind of black and white cementing our sides here in case there wasn't any confusion, Danny's been cemented to be, you know, a pretty, you know, faceless evil villain at this point. And, and I, I don't mean to say that, like, you know, faceless in the sense that, you know, it, it's not good and she's just an angry character. I think that, you know the the emotional depth that they've thrown into her is is great. Um, I figured I liked, you meant I figured you meant faceless as in as in at the end of this next episode she's gonna peel her face. She's off. She's gonna peel her faceless face off. Man. Yeah, and she's gonna be Cal Drogo. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and she's gonna ride off into the sea with her mer friends and uh, swim down to Atlantis. And <clears throat> anyway, I liked the thing with John killing his own dude. Um, I think it's the Hound. It could be somebody else who's talking about the original Siege of King's Landing. And they say something along the lines of, there are no good men in... There are no good men when a city's being sacked, only monsters or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so for the fact that, that John to come out of that, I thought was a pretty cool little callback. Yeah, that's cool. The, the Siege is very is very good. And I... I didn't think the shaky camera thing was overdone. I actually like that it yeah. kind of moves between characters and moments. And and I'm telling you, I thought the music was fantastic. I just enjoyed yeah. it. I, um, I thought the ash following the dust, the grit, and Arya, like, you just, like, you feel like you're suffocating with her during the scenes. And it's just... It's just really good, and I and I like the loss of the mom and the child with the fire at the end. It's you know it feels very anti-hero, but that's kind of Game yeah. of Thrones. So there has been, as with every episode uh, of this season, so much hate online and throughout people. Um, some things in this episode and in many episodes before certainly deserved. 
and so many are not, I feel personally, as I've tried to defend and stuff. Um, I'm just, I'm kind of curious, how, where does this episode fall for you guys? What, what are your overall impressions on it in like the Game of Thrones lexicon? Because I think that this is one of my favorite episodes, period. Yeah, I think so too, for me. I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah, see, it won't be for me. I mean, yeah, I don't okay. think it's a bad episode in the sense that I think overall there's a lot of really good. But, um, again, I just think f- and this this entire season is going to be hard because seeing a lot of these things happen is going to... I think until the books end and I'm able to read and see the characters and the, the changes that are there and kind of maybe get a better understanding of what Martin wanted from the characters... Some of this feels a little shallow for me still. Um, it's not that I'm not enjoying the season. I really am. Um, I just think that there are things that I just, uh, I feel, I feel a little, a little, I don't know, lost for. Um, but yeah, I mean, sure. it's not a, it's not a bad one. It's just, it's not going to be in my, it's, it probably won't be in my top 10. Oh, okay. Which is, yeah. And yeah, it's a point we've already made, but once again, every complaint or anything does come with the, you know, the stakes are so high at this point. Yeah. Our expectations are high. So, like, everything comes with the asterisk that all of this is some of the best television I've ever watched. Like, this is, it's so cool to be a part of this moment right now, mm-hmm. even though the, the online aspect of it is pissing me off. <laughs> but to, like, get to watch this and experience this with, with people, get to talk about it with you guys and just kind of just have this like i don't know the last i people talk about like the season finale of mash or whatever how like the country was just united jeremy probably remembers that he was probably like in his 30s i was there man i was Uh, there i was was just just Uh, get just turned 21 (laughs) this is this is something that so many people are experiencing at once and um you know nothing could ever live up to the hype of that i don't think um no but this is a I think that they're doing just fine. Speaking of so many people experiencing it at once, uh, next week, I have <gasps> some, some bad news, guys. <gasps> I will be on a plane during the finale of Game of Thrones. Planes sell Wi-Fi. So either I have to watch it on my phone, uh. which is not the ideal... That's, that just is not the way I pictured watching the series finale of Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's kind no. of like very millennial, though. And then my... It's true. And then, so if I don't do that, which is kind of what I'm hoping, I have to not only... I have to get through the oh. plane ride is, of what I imagine will be people watching Game of Thrones <laughs> through the airport home, and I don't get home until what is scheduled to be midnight which i if the flight is exactly on time maybe that's true regardless then i have to get in an uber drive home get home all without getting spoiled and then i'm assuming i still won't watch it that night i don't know Uh, no rent a hotel at the airport watch it there (laughs) and then uh and then, uh, fortunately, I have the following day off. So immediately, I'll just wake up and watch it, I guess. But uh, I would just push your flight to the next day. Dude, I would just, I would throw on headphones and I would just like blast music until I was in the Uber. I'd probably tell the Uber guy, don't talk about Game of Thrones. And then I would just be fine. I don't know. I'm, I'm worried. I obviously, I can't even, I'm going to have to huh. keep airplane mode on the entire time. Yeah. I, I'm worried about even having my Wi-Fi on so that someone doesn't text me or something. I don't get an alert or something. Anything could happen. That's so, that's scary. Yeah. I really think Whew. that on the airplane, you'll be able to watch it though. I just, I don't know if I but want it, to. It does lose a lot. I get that. And But here's the thing. What if somebody next to you is watching? I know. That's yeah. my thing. It's going to be some asshole. It's going to be at the perfect angle of like you resting carefully or, you know, comfortably. And then on the left, like your left eye will just like see the entire show. He's not even going to have headphones in. It's just going to oh, be Oh, no. Blasted. No, he'll be like, son <laughs> of a bitch, Danny died. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. put it past certain people. I don't. Yeah, I'm I'm legitimately scared. That it and like the airport, it's just news screens and you have to imagine they're all over that at that point. They're like the show's done, we could spoil everything. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Ah, uh, well, good luck. Yeah. My, I would never put myself in a situation like that. Like, it sucks that you are kind of, you've been thrust into it. Um, my dad right now, who is not listening to this episode as it's coming out, has decided he has not watched Sunday's episode of Game of Thrones because he wants to watch that one and this next one back to back. And I don't understand because you're risking having so much spoiled for you. And he's like, I'm, I'm just keeping off, uh, keeping offline. I'm like, yeah, but like, ugh, the it's risk risky. there, especially like, you know, he's he's a small town cop. Some people are mean to cops. Like, what if what if a guy found out about this and like he's getting a ticket and he's like, oh, you you know that Jamie died, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think Got about. You so good. So, yeah, I don't. I'm not. It's it, it's kind of terrifying that that I have to go to such lengths though to not be spoiled because it's just like that it's it just goes back to the uh technology thing right like yeah how quick that stuff gets out there will be oh by the way did you guys watch this uh last episode like live or live ish yeah i had problems streaming it really really it took me about 20 minutes for to get the app working wow oh. no i didn't i didn't have any issues yeah i i watched actually it. on just what around cable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Up, so. I got one other thing for you guys. If you have a couple minutes here. I certainly do. So I was talking to uh, one of my friends, good friends, big Game of Thrones fan. Jenna. Uh, Je- I was going to say no, Jenna. No, no. <laughs> uh, my friend Kyle, who doesn't listen that to is not. <laughs> that is not descriptive <laughs> enough. Who does? Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Johnson. I can give you his address, <laughs> his, his social security number, if anyone's interested. He doesn't actually listen to Thrones and Scones, so literally say whatever you want about him, because mm-hmm. he's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> calls, call, he uh, calls himself one of my best friends, doesn't even listen to my podcast. Yeah. And he's a giant Game of Thrones fan. So, so wait, I didn't even know that. Is he? Yeah, he's read all the books. Watches the, he's seen the series a bunch of times. No. He's a huge Johnson? Fan. What a dick, really? Johnson can read? Yeah. What a serious a hole! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he had a good. Uh, he te- immediate again. This is what I'm worried about. After the episode, immediately text me, uh, and uh, going off about how unhappy he was about the Daenerys <gasps> twist, oh. and he and I. I told him right away. I said, "Oh well." He's like, "It just came out of left field," and I said. You should have been listening to Thrones and Scones, and it wouldn't have, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But uh, he uh, he didn't like that, but he did have an interesting point, I, I, and I didn't necessarily agree with his uh, issues there. But he, uh, he did have an interesting point uh, and a little bit of a theory here, which I had, did see stirring around the Internet, which is going to – there's probably every theory known to man around the Internet. Sure. But he... Uh, and this is where I would hope this would not be the case because I would not like the idea that the post discussions would spoil anything in any format. But he did say that he thought it was odd that the post discussion did not talk about Cersei's death at all. They didn't talk about Cersei at all. They talked about everyone else but Cersei. And then his I, his thought is like, well, why? Like, why? The, you know, she's such a big character and they don't even mention her at the end and, like, discuss her death. But they talk about Jamie's death, which is, you know, they're showing Cersei in that scene. And uh, so he thinks she's alive. Uh, she's not. <laughs> no. She can't A be. castle crumbled on top of her. She can't be. Um, no, she can't be. I don't think they talked about it because I think it was so odd. Op- like she had her kind of whole emotional moment, and yeah. then her death was Jamie's emotional moment. Um, sure. But uh, that's true. They didn't, I, as far as I recall, mention her at all. Here's what it could be going into. We've been saying like, ooh, maybe they'll twist into it being Westworld or something. I got an alternative theory. We've already seen Danny. She's kind of, you know, she's walked through fire and stuff. Cersei just comes out of the ground, moving the rocks and shit. She turns out full-blooded Lannisters, which maybe Jamie wasn't for some reason. You know, he's the second-born twin, and he only got half of the goods or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, can control Earth, and then uh, Varys was already a merman, so his people control water. And then this series becomes Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, <laughs> I, honestly, I'm I'm for it. 
But uh, <laughs> he actually went, uh, I'll, and I'll, I'll give him credit for this one too. Uh, he went on to go further on his oh. on his theory of of not only that she's alive, but <laughs> what she does. <laughs> okay, Please. so again, even more uh, unbelievable. But I thought it was kind of a cool, interesting idea, so I wanted to share it uh, and give a little props to him. Um, despite the fact that, again, I repeat, he will not be listening to this. <laughs> and he is yeah. an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he uh, he thinks Cersei's alive, and he thinks the ending should be that Cersei escapes the castle, gets a, across the seas or something. I don't know, again, I have no idea how. Sure. Uh, has her baby, and i got to remember, make sure I get his little thing right. Arya goes and kills Cersei to scratch her off her list, which, again, makes no sense as far as the arc they're building for Arya with the Hound and everything. And then the baby starts the cycle over again of like this idea that this... Uh, other potentially true air. Oh, it just flips. Ar- arguably true air is out there that then has a right to this throne. And that Danny's we'll, hunting for? Yeah, or something like that. That it basically starts, that it, it comes full circle, which is a cool idea. Yeah, I don't hate that I part of it. Wanted, wanted to share it, but I think getting to that point is a little bit choppy. Would a little, be, a lot would choppy. Would you be surprised if they don't like go, you know, Five years later, at the beginning of the next show, would that make you mad? Would you want? Well, you I mean, not just because like just cat? because I've seen the preview for the next episode. Yeah, we've already seen that. That was pr- a pretty cool shot, though, that they showed with Daenerys up at the. I don't Do you know think how they'll end doing anything like King's that? Landing. Like but. end with like a a summary, like a. I know, would bet against it. Yeah, me too. I hope not. I, th- I think that'd be super dumb. But the Cersei thing is uh the flip kind of idea because i've i've read a it was a di- totally different theory and it had to do with the white walkers but kind of like where they get stuck in a time loop essentially yeah uh, whether magical or just like you're saying where things just kind of keep repeating themselves and the wheel is never truly broken blah 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 um it's a fun idea cersei surviving can't be a thing that happened <laughs> because they couldn't even escape before a castle fell down upon them yeah uh, uh, but then it did. And also, I mean, again, it wasn't in this show, which I feel was dumb. So maybe they could play it. But in the books, if this is how it ends for Cersei, which I think it does, because I think this was a Martin decision, um, because the prophecy is the, that Valonqar, little brother or whatever it means, you'll die with the Valonqar's hands around your neck or something. And that came to pass, like, in a way that we didn't expect, but there was prophecy to set up this moment, but she had to die to fulfill that. Yeah. No, I thought, uh, I, uh, I like the way it played out. I am in no way thinking that Cersei <laughs> is alive, <laughs> but oh. fun idea. Yeah. Uh, give a little shout out to Kyle. No, what a, what a ridiculous, this man is a lawyer. I would never trust him. <laughs> <laughs> fun idea. Maybe if he ever mm. listens to the show. Yeah, Maybe. He'll, uh, so by the way, I want to, uh, I've got a, I've got a fun question here that I want to write down that I was actually going to pose to you right now and I won't, but, uh, in the spirit of this question, which you'll get in our season recap or maybe even our show recap, um, I want to know, Jeremy, how's that dark chocolate scone? You know, I was all excited to make this scone because it got such good ratings online and it's a, like a dark chocolate mixed with milk chocolate. It was okay. It's probably one of the worst scones I've had, but uh, I'm going to do the marshmallow thing, and I think I may have to change my opinion, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, is this is this a chocolate batter scone? It's a chocolate it's got... batter scone, yeah. Mm. yeah. I have not had one, but just on principle, they're already dried. I feel like it doesn't work. Yeah. You're supposed to do like a, uh, what is it, like a a drizzle of chocolate sauce or whatever, a fudge thing over top of it. I didn't make that because I I don't really like super sweet scones. Like I don't want something that's like all that sugar. Um so I just wanted to try that. And it was it was it was good. It just was uh Do you know how like we talked about scones how like you want it to be kind of like crunchy but then in the middle kind of almost almost undone but not really like can't... Yeah. Yeah. So this one was like you said, like just super dry. Yeah, bummer. I know. Well, 
Honestly, J- I think that's the first time I've actually got... finished a conversation about a scone. Well, you you was got that... a little out of hand there at the end, but I was going to say when you your original review very well articulated, well thought out, yeah, um, clearly pre written. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, I was I was very I was very impressed until you got a little out of, a little crazy with uh, J- Tony asked you one question. You feel like you can just take over the whole fucking podcast, but all right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who do you think you are, me? Uh, <laughs> Good sir. <laughs> <laughs> but. If y'all would like to listen to our podcast, first of all, you've already done it. Look at you. You're being so accomplished today. Second of all, you can always find us and all of our links to all of our things at thronesandscones.com. Again, sorry for the late episode. If everything goes according to plan, we will have our final episode recap for you next Wednesday, which is hard to say, but I'm looking forward to... uh, to whatever that brings us. And I thank you for joining us. And I ask you again, because I think we've only gotten the answer 82, 83 times at this point. And I don't know if that's enough to decide for certain. Are you down with GOT? Yeah, you know me. I did, uh, I did not do any scone baking this weekend, but I did make banana beer bread. Ooh. What kind of beer? I got, so I got some banana bread beer. For my birthday from a friend, uh, which I have funny. seen in stores before, never bought it because it's like, it just sounds like a novelty and it's kind of expensive for what I imagine is just okay. And it is just okay. It's very banana. Like it's so banana. And so I was like, I wonder if you could make beer bread with this. And so I looked it up and there's a recipe inspired by that beer where you basically mix a banana bread batter and a beer bread batter together. Um, it was, so here's here's what I will say about maybe your scone. You didn't do that fudge drizzle. This thing had like a brown butter vanilla glaze type thing. And everything that that glaze touched was really good. But the like bottom half of the bread that didn't get any glaze kind of sucked. Because <laughs> it didn't know if it wanted to be sweet or not. Yeah. And uh, But w- one of the oddest things I have ever uh, concocted, and also... I it said pour it into this size tin and then you like pour a bunch of melted butter over the top of it. It was I've never made bread like this before. Um and uh, apparently it the recipe was wrong. I should have definitely used a bigger tin cuz it rose and melted butter went all over my oven and <laughs> smelled real good. It smelled like brown butter. It smelled yeah, it smelled like it smelled like black butter. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not an ingredient that most people use in their cooking, and I think I understand why. Yeah. Ugh.